Is it on? It's on. <clears throat> okay. Administering vendors. <clears throat> Should we go around and introduce each other? No. Ourselves? Okay. So we're going to talk about um, installing Grouper, um, the DDL in the database, API, <clears throat> which is um, basically the libraries and a command line <clears throat> interface, the user interface, web services. We'll talk about how Pen does source control, um, upgrades, maintenance, roadmap, etc. Am I just installing this thing? Yeah. So Internet2 has a grouper demo server. And the address is grouper demo to internet 2 edu um, You can get an account to look at the UI, web service, etc. This is also the server that we're going to be using for this training where you can install stuff. And uh, we also put snapshots in the development version of Grouper up there so you can see things as we develop them. For instance, before Grouper 2.0 came out, you could see how permissions works and external users and stuff like that. <coughs> um, also, institutions can use this for trainings or demos or whatever they want. Obviously, not in production. It's a demo server. So basically, I set up some accounts there, home, test one, test two, etc. I handed everybody out one of those accounts with a password. And um, there are three places where there are passwords. One is the SSH, one is in Apache with basic auth, and one is the MySQL password, so you all have your own database. <coughs> So um, on the demo server um, for the various versions of Grouper, it's one um, application per Tomcat. So the UI runs on one Tomcat, the web service runs on one Tomcat, and that's for every version. So we have a lot of Tomcats there. However, for the training, <coughs> you have a local Tomcat in your directory, which is going to have both the UI and the web service. Um, but we do that in general so that um, the applications don't affect each other. One application could take all the memory and kill the other application. And also, if you do a deployment of the UI, you don't want to have to restart the web service necessarily. Um, so in this training, we're going to be using um, Apache basic authentication. Um, however, at Penn, obviously, we use uh, Kerberos principles. <coughs> um, so in prod and test for grouper on the UI, we have cosine and shib. Um, they both protect that one application. And the reason for that is that we want external users to come and register using shibboleth, but we don't want shibboleth people logging into the UI to do maintenance stuff. So basically, the way the servlets and everything are organized, you can protect it with different authentications and different realms of the application. <clears throat> OK, so if you're in SSH, um, you can type PWD. You should have a Tomcat there. And um, basically, how this was set up is um, there's Tomcat test 1 through 9 <coughs> in uh, Etsy init D. So we can centrally control these. <coughs> And um, they just share the same Tomcat 6 base as all the others, so we can upgrade them in one um, step. Um, everybody has their own Java okay. symlink. And that's in opt Javas. So you'll see opt Javas, Java test 1 through 9. And you can type Tomcat start and Tomcat stop to start and stop your Tomcat. And here are some other commands, JStack, NetStat. Etc. So all I did to set everything up, just so you know how to go from scratch, is I added the users, I set the password, I created a database, I created a database user, I granted everything from that database to that user, I set up the Apache passwords, um, I copied the Tomcat bullet or template or whatever to your Tomcat. I changed the ports so you all have your own ports. 
and then I added them to the um, Linux startup uh, check config, and I think that's it. Um, in the Etsy profile, when you log in, I set your Java to Java 6, um, and Grouper is moving to Maven, um, and I think you need Maven 3 right now. I just have the regular Maven, but I don't think you need it for this training yet. And set your path. <coughs> so if you go to the web page, grouperdemo.internet2.edu, it has all the links of all the environments, including the links to your UI and web service. Um, so to do that, obviously just edit the index.html, put some proxy passes in, which is how we do um, Apache to Tomcat communication, which is a little bit different than how Penn does the other ones with MaJK. So with this way, you don't need a um, worker stop properties. However, Grouper at Penn does still use MaJK just to be consistent with all our other deployments, but the demo server doesn't. Um, bounce Apache, So now we're going to install the Grouper API. We're going to make a uh, 1.6.3, 1 which is the latest stable version of Grouper directory in your home directory. Go there. Um, you can do a wget of this address. Unzip it, cd to that, and emacs the Grouper properties. If you look at the presentation, you can copy all these commands from the notes um, section. And if there's a backslash at the end of the line, that just means it's the same line. So wrap it, although in the, or the notes section. The notes section should be right. So here are some Emacs um, cheat sheet commands if you need that, or feel free to use BI or whatever other editor you like. So in the grouper properties, we are going to set uh, groups.wheel.use to true. The wheel group in grouper is the admin group. If you don't have that, then there isn't an admin group, but it's basically like sort of like fast admin that can do anything. And then put these seven lines in there. What these do is uh, the dot zero is the first section, and dot one is the second section. So it's going to automatically create a group on startup called web service client users and Etsy system in group, which is the wheel group. And um, by default, that's the wheel group. <coughs> and instead of test x and test xa, put that as your number. So test 2, test 3, test 4, or test 2, test 3, test 4, whatever it was. And the same for here for this test x to add you to the sysadmin group. Um, grouper include exclude is a way to easily have whitelist and blacklist for groups. So you could have a system of record group and then have um, whitelist and blacklist. And then require groups is a way to say, if you're not an employee anymore, take you out of a certain group or whatever. So put that in group of properties and then hit save. <laughs> yes, I have a question. Yeah. OK. So how are we configuring this? What does all this mean? Yep. This means, by default, Grouper does not have an admin group, just for security reasons. So we're enabling that so we have an admin group, like a fast admin. This means. Uh, auto create any of these groups, and this group is the web service client users, which is going to be a group that of, of users that are allowed to connect to the web services. This is the um, admin group, so anyone in there has all powers in Grouper. We can set things up. Include exclude is an option you can put on a group, so you can have a whitelist or a blacklist. And require groups is a way that you can say this group. In order for someone to be in this group, you have to be in this other group. So you could say, if they're not an employee anymore, take them out of the user group of this application. Okay. So it's auto deprovisioning. OK, Drupal Ironate that properties is what connects you to the database. So you can take these things, change the x to whatever number you are, and the password is the same password as the other stuff. Uh, I can help you do that. OK, one more file, I think, grouperloader.properties. This is going to auto-load the uh, grouper loader type. Grouper loader is what um, syncs up a group with an external data source. Right now, SQL is the only thing supported. So we have our course groups or our org groups or whatever else. 
things from Penn Community, whether if you're an employee that uses the loader. Yep. Now we're going to init the database. Um, if you go to SQL YOG or MySQL command prompt, you don't have to do this. You'll see that there's no tables there unless you created one to see if MySQL is working. Um, so if you use CD and change that X to whatever number you are to group or API binary bin, and you type gsh dash, uh, gsh .sh dash registry, that shows the menu. Um, and what we want to do is just a check in a run script, which is going to check the database to make sure all the um, DDL is correct. And since it's not, um, it's going to run that script. It's also going to prompt you to see if you want to just say yes. And that's what's going to populate the database with tables. Then you can go to either MySQL or SQL Yog or whatever and see the table. The database there, and it's blank for grouper. There is a uh, quick start in grouper, which has some um, test stuff from uh, University of Bristol in the UK. So if you run this command from Unix, you'll download an XML export of that from Grouper's uh, subversion. This will download a SQL file that'll put a bunch of test subjects in there. With the same GSH command, um, GSH is Grouper shell, where you can run basically anything with Grouper via command line or with a script. Um, and it's also how we run all our utilities. So um, you can run a SQL file of the subjects, and you can do an XML import of the XML. And we rewrote our XML import export. So this quick start is from the old version of that. So you can do XML import, import old. We're running this grouper system, which is the all-knowing user in that XML file. So if you run those four commands, you should get it. OK. So. If you look at um, SQL YOG or MySQL GUI or just um, the MySQL command line, um, <coughs> you should be able to connect and see all your tables and data in the stems and groups and memberships and stuff. So now we have all the test data. But in order for your test user to be able to log in, you need to add that user to group or two. This is stuff that we don't have to do at Penn because everything is loaded from Penn Community as subjects, but for this system, we don't have a uh, identity management system. So you need to log into Grouper Shell. And when you don't put um, any arguments on it, it's just going to go to a Grouper Shell prompt. And then you can run these commands. And again, change the x to be for your number. And, uh, and we're going to add your um, Test 1A to web services client users, which we didn't do in the group of properties by default. 